Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm Leah Hogg. This is our weekly current affairs update in English. My guest today is the Honorable Dr. Beppe Fenekadami, who is the Shadow Minister of Home Affairs. And I thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Leah, for having me here this evening. Thank you very much. A lot has happened uh, over the last few weeks. Oh, and uh, I'd like to focus today on your vision and how Malta can re-establish itself in the international business community. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, I think we all agree that Malta is going through a very de delicate moment in its political uh, evolution because what we have witnessed during the last weeks uh, has made us all realize uh, how deep certain problems we have been speaking about for quite a long time are in this country. We are witnessing what's happening in our law courts every other day uh, with now a number of cases which expose the, the, the extent of corruption, the extent of, I think, moral decay, the extent of damage done to the reputation of Malta. We've got, on the one hand, the, 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 the persons charged with the, with the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia, which is a murder, which is an assassination, which has shocked this country, and as the story comes known, one realizes that how much this woman did to expose government corruption, and the more one realizes that she was actually killed because she knew too much and she was determined to expose what's happening. We also witnessed what happened in the law courts over the last few weeks where we had a number of, of persons who are very close to the, to the Joseph Muscat administration. When we speak very close, we're speaking of the chief of staff, we're speaking of persons who are very close who worked actually in Castile alongside Joseph Muscat, alongside Prime Minister Robert Abela, alongside Conrad Mitzi, alongside many important people in this government who, who are involved, who are very much involved in cases of corruption over the years. And I think now we all realize that this rot has to stop. And uh, I think when you ask me what are, what, how do you see the future, basically we have the big challenge in Malta of re-establishing our good reputation. Our, we are a small country, we lack resources, however we, ha we have the human resources. Human resources where we built an economy based on trust, we built an, an economy over the years where the good reputation was the, 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 the biggest arm we had in our hands, and now that is practically all lost. And so the biggest challenge for anyone in politics, and most more important for the Nationalist Party, is to project itself, to send the message outside there, to send the message overseas as well, that this country can do much better than it did in the last few years. Unfortunately, we've had too many stories in the international media as well, which have done big harm to what we have all built up together. But I am sure that the people out there now realize that it's time to take stock of the situation. It's time to move forward by not forgetting what we went through, by insisting that justice has to be done. And justice means that all persons involved, directly or indirectly, in such cases, there's justice in, with, with regards to such persons. But we have to send the message that there's the Nationalist Party which is ready to take the country to turn over a leaf this country to move forward and I think go go towards the future on, a, on, on the grounds that we are a country can, that can do much better Nothing. in terms of good governance, in terms of good reputation, in terms of a country which knows how to act properly without where the rule of law, there's the rule of law where there's no sense of impunity, where anyone can do business in a country like Malta without getting entangled in the very sad stories which have characterized our country in the recent past. Mm. Um, the case, the case, the Daphne case has gone on for a very long time. It's still unresolved really. Um, what, uh, how, how, how do you see light at the end of the tunnel? I think that the Daphne story will be around for quite some time because the intricities about, 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 about what was going on in the circles of power and how Daphne knew so much on what was going on that I think, the, realistically speaking, we will hear more and more and realize more and more and much more 
how the, the, how, how the Joseph Muscat administration built up a whole system based on corruption. Mm -hmm. So when we see what's happening, when we see even the, 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 the recent charges in court, one immediately realizes that they are also a consequence of what Daphne started. Daphne was the person who wrote about a lot, who wrote a lot about, for example, the abuse there, were, there was in the sale of the Maltese citizenship, the famous sale of Maltese passport. It was Daphne who, who disclosed how this, this, this scheme was being used by, utilized by persons like Keach Cambry to, 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 to earn hundreds of thousands even from such, such schemes. It was Daphne who, who wrote so much about the sale, for example, of Enemolta. We now know that Enemolta sold one third of, of its shareholding to, to the Chinese company, to Shanghai Electric. And now we know that the persons behind it are persons who were close to Joseph Muscat's administration, who were favored by Joseph Muscat's administration, and who are the persons who were behind even the, the, Panama, the Panama paper companies. Yes. So, 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 so when we speak about Daphne, we speak about Daphne the assassinated, Daphne Caruana Galicia, but we still speak about the stories, the stories that she initiated, the stories she wrote about with great courage. And today, I, everyone agrees that she's being vindicated. She's being, she definitely was right on most of those stories. Absolutely. Uh, we're joined, we're taking a call from our next guest, who is Professor Colin Lawrence. He's a world expert on reputational risk and good governance and the former director of the Bank of England. Good evening. Good evening, Professor Lawrence. Um, hi, hi there. Good evening. I'm, I'm not seeing you. Am I supposed to see you or not? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not. Uh, I'm not so technical here. Yeah. So, um, but we're seeing you. Um, I mean, the okay. picture is very clear here. So, thank you very much. Okay. We're live today. Thank you. Um, you followed the case and also. Um, discussed with me many times um, governance and the lack of good governance that we've seen over the last uh, few years. Um, can you bring us up to date uh, with your thoughts from well, the Look, I'm not an expert. I can't say I'm the greatest expert. Um, I've, I've learned a lot about the Daphne case and that. But when I look at the whole picture for Malta, you've got to look at what's driving the economy. And when I look at the economy, just like I look at portfolio risk of banks or fund managers or insurance companies, um, Malta is driven by huge foreign investment. And a lot of that foreign investment, including your, uh, your scheme to bring private investors in and to make people residents and give them um, citizenship, um, it, it turns out that a lot of the business activities in online gambling and banking, in cryptocurrency, this passport scheme that I've described. So when you look at it, it just looks full with corruption, money laundering. And that's what Daphne Galizia was writing about. And of course, the ECB have been trying to, um, they, they can't indict, but what they've done is they've sanctioned um, some of your agencies, um, the FIAU, and if you look at the FIAU, which is the you know the financial um, intelligence analysis, um, it just looks like Malta is a place that is corrupt. That would be the opinion, and that damages uh, reputational risk in a in a significant way. Um, how do you foresee uh, Malta restoring its reputational risks with financial institutions? Well, what I think has got to happen, there needs to be a reform. Now, you know, as you know, I grew up in um, South Africa and I've been following South Africa um, very clearly. And South Africa had the Gupta family, which were a foreign family that lived in South Africa and what they did was state capture. And I'm beginning to think, when I look at what's happening to the amount of monies, the funds, the corruption, 
the scandals in Malta looked so similar to South Africa. This sort of state capture started in um, the Soviet Union um, when, it, when it became, you, you know, got out of um, being the Soviet Union and started privatizing its industry. And, you know, under um, Putin, there, there's a lot of corruption, okay? And in South Africa, under the Gupta family and the previous um, prime minister, uh, president um, of, of, of the country, the same thing has happened, and they're finding it very difficult to prosecute him. Um, and the Guptas have, have left. Now, Malta, if you look at it on paper, look under all the criteria of good governance and good reputation, it looks very much um, like, like a South Africa, everything I've read. Um, and as I heard the previous gentleman um, saying that what Galizia had written, um, you know, I can't go into the detail on Malta of everything, but you just look at the investigation by the EBA, by the EU, by Moneyville and everything. And um, on paper, it doesn't look good for Malta and it will damage the economy and soon the whole thing will collapse like a house of cards. Bear in mind, Malta was not complying with, um, you know, the tax rate. The tax rate was 5% to attract these residents on the passport scheme. And, um, you know, countries, uh, it, 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 it seems that um, currently, President Biden has come up with the OECD countries of having a minimum tax for big corporations. But in the same vein, we're likely to see more tax conformities that will be very difficult for people to shove money offshore. But that's what Malta has become. Malta is an offshore center where that's how you come for funding and finance of gambling, casinos, and all the things that I said earlier. It's very bad for the reputation of Malta to do proper, clean business because you're always going to have people suspicious about, you know, what institutions are doing there. Dr. Fene uh, I, I, I listened attentively to what the gentleman just said. Yes, I think the message we have to send out there is that the people who created the mess cannot the people be the people who will clear up the mess. And I think that is very important for all to understand. Malta has been in the financial services industry for a number of years. Malta has been in the maritime industry for a number of years. Malta has been in a, in a very, in a very uh, limited, dedicated niche market. And we, we performed successfully until, <laughs> until Labour government came some seven years ago, and led by then Prime Minister Joseph Muscat, the order of the day was to try and abuse systems which were working perfectly for the Maltese island. The gentleman speaks about the favorable taxation agreements we have, the favorable tax rates we had in our country, which were never a bone of contention, which were never controversial until we, we were diligent in, 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 in carrying out, in, a, in running this country in a, in a, in a diligent manner. The problem today is that out there, we've, 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 our reputation is in tatters, and when your reputation is in tatters, questions start arising on all aspects of our economy. So when we speak about the gaming industry, which was a flourishing industry in this country, that today is also threatened because of our reputation out there. When we speak about the whole of the financial services industry, that as well is today threatened because a few people, a number of people close to the Joseph Muscat government, uh, decided that such a system which was working out perfectly, which was, which was a, a, a very important element in our economy, the system was abused and now we are where we are. So the message out there is, has to be that, you know, if these guys, if these persons created the mess, they cannot be expected to be themselves to clear up this mess. So that's why we at Parti Nationalista, that, that's why. The party leader, Bernard Gregg, is insisting on that it's time to turn over the leaf. It's time for a fresh start. It's time to kickstart this country again on all aspects of, of, of society, but more importantly, on all aspects of business. Malta is, is presently going through a very difficult time. We've got a number of hurdles we've got to, 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 to face in the, in the immediate future. And, uh, I am. I. I. I believe that, notwithstanding the the, the the difficult moment, 
a lot of Maltese, a lot of professionals, a lot of people in the business, in business in Malta are, are going through, we can get out of this together. Mm -hmm. But getting out of this together will require that we have to change the crop of people who run this country. Yes. The persons who created the mess cannot be the persons to clear up the mess. How, in your opinion, can the opposition contribute at this stage to restoring the reputation of, of our country? Absolutely. We have to send the message out there that we have a good track record. For example, like this is the first thing. We should be proud of Malta's track record in the past. Malta performed brilliantly in its first years as a, as a member of the European Union. People who never thought Malta would be a success in the European Union today look back and say Malta, such a small country, did so well in the European Union, its first years of the European Union. There's a, much, there's a lot to learn from that. So we are a country where our people are capable, our people, our people can compete, our key people can be the best in Europe, provided that there's a level playing field, provided that there's the rule of law, provided there's no impunity, provided that everyone is given a chance. And that is the problem which we have faced over the, the recent years. It is, we've had, and we still have, a government where the few were pushed forward, the few were protected, the few were given the, 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 the way to, 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 to find their way through, to abuse systems which worked perfectly over the years, and now we are where we are. And the, and the big lesson of all this is that when there is corruption, all of us have to pay a price. The country pays a price. The big businessman pays a price. The small businessman pays a price. Because when your reputation is in tatters, when your reputation is at risk, when, you, when, you, when, you don't, when your reputation is no longer good outside there, investment stops, business stops, and that uh, trickles down to all levels of society. So my message is that we have a responsibility, a very big responsibility as Parti Nacionalista, as an opposition, but a government in waiting, to, to send the message outside there that we are here to turn the leaf, the leaf. We need to start a, few, a new page, a new page where, I, I, I repeat, everyone is given a chance where there's no longer an impunity, where criminals face justice, and where the right people, the people who are honest, and the vast majority, the big majority of people in Malta, the Maltese, of all political shades, are honest persons, and being honest, I think, I am sure, we can make it even in the future. I believe um, Professor Lawrence is still with us. Hello, hi yes, there. Yes. You're hearing all this. Uh, what are your yes. views? Um, well, uh, I agree. Professor? I mean, <laughs> it needs a political solution, ultimately, which means people have to go and elect them and vote. And obviously, this party are not doing a good job. It, it's so hard to build up um, an infrastructure, industry, and a market for a country, and it's very easy in one shot to bring it all down. It's like a house of cards. And it just seems to me, on what I've observed, what I've seen, what I've read, it just looks like that. So how, how do you change that? I mean, practically, what do you do? So for example, the FIAU basically were controlled by someone, by the, uh, the governor of it, that actually help the government uh, members from who were in the government from from um, uh, say York and Fenwick from getting a license okay to casinos so the whole thing is really corrupt so what I'd say is this I would get the EU to have an investigation well beyond the European Banking Authority or the ECB it's got to go into the heart of a judicial system um, but it has happened where the EU have come in, and, and even on, on, on money goal, they didn't do very much, although they did say that uh, Malta aren't complying. That's not good enough. Okay, You need to have total reforms, and um, you can't, you know, there's a conflict of interest for the government to put in play those reforms on things that it controls. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it needs to be an independent body that comes in, does a full judicial review, the government have to commit to implementing all of it mm. and maybe calling an election. That's the only way a new election, they're not going to be happy with, but that ultimately is the only way you're going to change this. And even if there is a new election, what often happens, 
and the state capture is that the party continues in power because it's captured a lot of things further than money and banking. Do you, do you believe, uh, mm -hmm. do you believe, yeah. Professor, that it would be prudent for some key players in, in these corrupt practices to perhaps voluntarily resign from their positions? I think they all, but they're not going to. Um, they're not just going to resign. So what I'm saying is you've got to bring in an external body. Since Malta is a member of the EU, I would say it's got to be the EU or it's got to be a super national institution, um, such as a special body of investigation. Um, I don't know who it is from the IMF or since it's not only financial, um, it, it would have to come by some UN body. But I would keep it at the EU level and um, I, I, I would set up a separate commission of inquiry and they would conclude at the end of it um, what reforms would take place, which people are held accountable, and um, that's got to be taken to, it could be a referendum to implement that. Thank you. Otherwise, th this is a road downhill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lawrence. Once again, thank you. Um, Pleasure. Thank you. To conclude uh, for today, uh, Dr. Fenekadami. Uh, yes, I, had, I, I, I listened to what the professor had to say. The truth is that over the last few months, we've gone through a process where we had the Venice Commission, which has, was making drastic recommendations to the system of Malta. Now we are at a stage, a very crucial stage, on the manner of our report on Malta. And this is, this, this is the reality Malta is going through. Malta has been constrained to go through radical changes which have to take place as a result of the abuse of, the, of, the, the, of a few people over the last few years. So I think that the, the message out there should be now it's time to, to go for a, a new beginning. A new beginning where all those people involved, all those people involved in corruption, justice is made with, with, with these such persons, but more importantly, a new crop of people will get help Malta get through this difficult moment. And that, that crop of people, I think, exists within the Nationalist Party, the Party Nationalista, presently led by Dr. Bernard Rick. Thank you very much. To close for today, would you kindly convey a message to our English viewers? Oh, it was a pleasure for me to, to be on net television this, this evening and have this program in the English language. I am, I am sure I, the feedback I have on such program is that uh, the, there are a number of viewers who, who, who like to listening to programs, to discussion programs in, in English, and I think this is a very good start for net television for future ventures on these lines. Thank you very much, Dr. Fenek Adami. Thank you very much for watching. Should you have any comments, queries, please do send them in to the number that we shared during this program. I see you next week at the same time. I wish you a lovely evening.